XKR, the body has bigger sills, a bigger rear spoiler, and snowshoes on the bonnet. It's also got this new downturn nose, which makes it look rather disapproving, like a 1950s seaside landlady. And I'm sorry, but red brake calipers on a Jag? It's like fitting Camilla Parker Bowles with a vajazzle and, and rings. I'm saying this out loud, aren't I? Inside, we find leather designed to look like carbon fibre and blue ambient lighting. The walnut from Jags of yesteryear, gone. The gentleman's club has been turned into Grant Bovey's gym. There are other issues too. The ride is a bit harsh. Run over a pheasant, you'd be able to tell whether it was a cock or a hen. Uh, and then there's the price. It's not what you'd call cheap. In fact, it is what you'd call £97,000, and that is what you'd call nearly a hundred grand. So, Jag has sacrificed subtlety, good looks, comfort, silence and value, all its core values, in the pursuit of speed. But if all you're interested in is speed, I wonder, would you be better off with the Nissan GTR? This is the new model, more powerful, more aerodynamic, and unbelievably, even more grippy. We're told it's a masterclass in what's technically possible right now. Built in a hermetically sealed factory, it is the last word in precision engineering. Every single piece, the brakes, all four wheels, the 3.8-litre twin-turbo engine, the steering, the new double-clutch gearbox, they're all electronically linked to sing the song of speed in perfect harmony. Let me give you just one example. The tyres on this car are filled with nitrogen because ordinary air is considered to be too unstable. It expands and it contracts too much. And I know what they mean. Air drives me mad. It's too big or it's too little. Ugh, air! But can this OCD special really be faster than the bonkers Jag? <laughs> 